and good good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, whenever you are. As a community member, I'm excited about this event because I have contributed to Rhythmus Chaos for the last two years and grown with this community. Here's my title today. I will discuss from novice to Rhythmus Chaos maintainer. My name is Namgyu Park, a maintainer of Rhythmus Chaos and also a CNCF ambassador now. Here's my agenda today. I've broken down my contribution journey into five stages. Let's talk about motivation first. Why do I contribute to open source? What are the benefits of contributing to open source? Let's talk about the developer's personal growth. How to become an awesome engineer. Back in college, I had a lot of worries. It felt like technology was changing so fast and I was struggling to keep up with the basics of computer science. I didn't think that running things like Spring or React would actually be useful for me to work on important projects. Luckily, I did a mentorship program, uh, sorry, internship program at a startup and it changed my perspective how to see the world. I think the best way for developers to get better is by working on real life projects that people use. But for students, it's not easy to create code that people actually use. Open source is very special because it's a collaborative project with developers from all around the world. I used a lot of open source in my company and decided to contribute to open source at that time. But contribute to open source seems too tough. I'm a maintainer and also a contributor. Let's talk about why it's hard from each perspective. As a novice, the question is which open source to contribute to? There are 420 million projects on GitHub and everyone wants to make a huge impact on open source, but you know, they cannot find issues easily because there are, there are too few good first issues. Sometimes even if they raise a pull request, maintainers are not reviewing their PRs because they, they don't have much time. Yes, I'm a maintainer now. You know, maintainers have a ton of work to do, but why can we easily give it to contributors? Unlike companies, we don't have strict deadlines for open source work. So it's sometimes quicker for me to do something myself rather than taking the time to explain to someone else. There can be also potential security threats as in the recent case of XD. And the last one, there are some issues with code implementations having cool architecture, but others are usually not something you want to put on your resume. In other words, not all items are attractive. Yes, contributing to open source is not easy for the reasons mentioned above, sorry, which is why I first contributed to open source through mentorship program. I have always been fascinated by cloud native technology and have used tools like Kubernetes, Ham, Prometheus, and Argo CD during my work. I saw that CNCF supports more than 180 open source projects for the cloud native. They have programs like KubeCon and KubeDay, which help people jump into these projects. They fostering open source contributions using that programs or mentorship programs. CNCF supports several mentorship programs, one of which is the LFX mentorship. LFX mentorship is a three month program where you will work with a mentor to contribute to open source. Mentors are the maintainers of each of CNCF's open source projects. This program allows you to contribute at a high level with the support of a maintainer. You know, I joined 
joined the program as a mentee in quarter one, 2023. During my mentorship program, I added unit test code to the project and changed the architecture of Itmos components to make them more testable. We had weekly meetings during which we set weekly to-dos, reviewed PRs, shared ideas, and asked questions. I found issues and action items with my mentor's help that I wouldn't have found on my own. I was a novice, so there was a lot of I didn't know, and changing the architecture of the main component wasn't easy. You know, community members helped me along the way, the picture on the right showed how they helped me choose better architecture. With the help of the community members, my pull request was successfully merged. In addition to this, I was able to merge a lot of pull requests during my mentorship program. The mentorship led me to become a member of Litmus Chaos and I wrote blog posts for Rhythmus and CNCF. So thanks to my mentor, Cyan, and other mentors too, Amit. And, you know, during my mentorship program, I became more passionate with my Rhythmus chaos, and I wanted to develop it more user-friendly. So this is the story of my contributions after the mentorship program. How do we become a community-driven open source? There are many ways, but I think one of them is to provide an environment where community members can plan and make long-term contributions. Also, not everyone in the community is comfortable with English. Some of them is some of them mother language is not English, you know. So it would be great if we communicate through written proposals than rather than Zoom meetups. When I have a new project idea, I often struggle with how to implement this feature. Whenever it does, I reference other major open source for inspiration. You know, CNCF already has over 20 graduate projects, including Kubernetes and Envoy. These projects have a culture of raising pull requests and discussing them through proposals. What you can see here is Kubernetes, OpenTelemetry, and Argo. They are all talking about new features using proposals. Yes, this, is, this was what I wanted. So I raised a pull request for using proposals. Now with a propo template like this, sorry, we can discuss and involve new features we have this template has motivations or use case or upgrade plan. So now let me explain my next work. During the LFX mentorship program, I made some contributions, but you know, nothing major, I those. So I tried to find a major issue and then I found an old issue in the backlog. I'd work on creating a program for Backstage, which is a C popular CNCF open source tool used as an internal developer platform. So I decided to create a Backstage program and wrote a proposal with a template and community members reviewed my proposals. This is part of the proposals. I designed it with the following use cases. As you can see, we had two user use cases. You know, use, case, use cases are really helpful to make my proposals more clarified and my projects more uh, clarified too. When writing a proposals, text alone is not enough, I think. I added a mock-up UI to show what our idea looks like. This helps others understand our concept better. And the left one is the conceptual design and the right one is actual implementation. Yes, it's important to break down one big plan into small pieces. I broke the implementation plans into five phases. And 
by breaking it down into several steps, I was able to contribute more clearly. Yes, as a result, my backstage program was successfully released. I released version one to the NPM package management tool, and it was listed on Backstage's official marketplace. I've also written about how to make our system more resilient with Backstage and Rhythmus Chaos on the CNCF blog. And Cyan gave a talk using the Backstage program at KubeCon Europe 2024. I think it's important not only to develop features, but also to contribute to in various ways, such as blogs and talks. OK. Um, I'd like to mention one more contribution I made. I created the K6 road generator. K6 is a road generating open source created by Grafana Labs. You can inject roads with a single JavaScript code. In principles of chaos engineering, it says to do chaos engineering production environment, but you know, Everyone knows that this is not easy. That's why I think it's right to start chaos engineering by injecting roles into the dev or staging environments. In the existing Eritmus chaos, there was no road test. So I had to build a coast or K6 separate tree in two inject roles. This was my motivation to create the K6 road generator chaos port. I raised a pull request based on the proposal I had made earlier and then built a K6 road generator chaos port. Here's a process of K6 road generator chaos port. Once the experiment job is executed, the helper pod injects the rows to the target application. The Rhythmus SDK made it easy to create experiments. I was able to implement multiple pull requests to create all the features. Since creating Chaos Port, I've added documentation describing the experiment to the Rhythmus document and the K6 document too. I also contributed a tutorial on the Rhythmus blog post using the K6 root generator. Now I have consistently contributed to Rhythmus Chaos and have been the second highest contributor for the past two years. You know, it's time for me to transition from a normal contributor to a mentor. But before that, let's talk about explore the new world. There are over 180 open sources at CNCF and you know, running and applying crowd native open source is always giving me motivation and inspiration. Attending KubeCon or KubeDay CNCF events is a great way to discover new things in the crowd native era. I attended KubeCon North America last year. It was priceless experience for me because I explored lots of interesting open sources, adoption stories, and feedback of Rhythmus Chaos. It was more memorable because Prippy, our community manager, introduced my backstage program during the keynote. Here's a picture at the keynote. And the time passed, I went to KubeCon China 2024 last month, and it was an amazing experience. I got to meet the people who maintain Rhythmus Chaos, Cyan and Prippy, and discuss various topics, including Rhythmus Chaos in person, which was special because we usually only communicate by online. And also, I gave a talk about how to use Rhythmus Chaos with many integrations like open telemetry and backstage and K6 from generator. You can check out with this QR code. 
Let me waiting sometimes. Okay. Yes, last but not least, it's time to share my knowledge to our community. Yeah, it's good to share what I know because when I teach others, I also learn. Plus, when I share my knowledge, I can help new people join our group and make our project better by passing on what I know to them. So I'm currently a mentor at LFX Mentorship. I guided my LFX mentor, mentee named Danish to contribute the, to the Rhythmus E2E project. And his mentorship program was successfully uh, complete, completed. I'm actively participating in a mentorship program as a mentor happening in South Korea now. It's a four-month program with 20 mentees who are contributing to Rhythmus Chaos with my guidance. This program is hosted by Korean government and this program is from July to October. We currently have 21 open issues, 41 pull requests submitted, and 20 requests, pull requests, sorry, successfully merged. It's amazing that we are still active. It took a lot of hard time to get all the pull requests merged, and I'm especially grateful to the community members who reviewed and discussed them. We use a Kanban board to manage all the issues and pull requests. You can easily see this by looking at Rhythmus GitHub project. Okay, uh, here are some feature works. Let me explain our mentee's work. This pull request reduced the 30 second installation process to three seconds. We no, lo we no longer had to wait for the mandatory 30 seconds for the experiment to start, thanks to Jamin So. And the second one is about the doc Amazon document DB. Rhythmus Chaos is using Mongo data, MongoDB as its main database. Document DB on AWS is compatible with MongoDB, but not 100% compatible. Our mentee Dong Young Kim is modifying the main architecture to make it 100% compatible. After that, we can use Document DB. We can use maybe last in the year or next year. As our company grows, you will need to automate project or user management in Rhythmus Chaos. You know, previously you had to call the, call the API directory, but in the future, we will create a Java SDK so that you can call Rhythmus API as easily as the, as the AWS SDK. This work is still in progress and um, done by Suyeon Zhang. Thanks to Sun Jong. And we are integrating the open telemetry SDK into each component of Rhythmus Chaos Chaos experiment. Soon you will be able to track its progress using the Jaeger dashboard, like the picture above. And we may we are planning to make some chaos experiments. Oh, sorry, Chaos Force 2. We will add new chaos words. First one is AWS RDS instance top chaos. And in this chaos board, you can easily stop your RDS instance in Rhythmus Chaos. Uh, thanks to Jong Woo Han uh, working on this project. And you will we will add a general toxic proxy chaos board. We already have a specific chaos board, but we have a plan to really support uh, toxic proxy feature. This work is doing by Junsu pa Park. And we will add service mesh chaos boards. Istio and Linkert already supports chaos experiments using their own custom resource named maybe Fort Injection. And so we will support them to execute periodically like Coop control apply the manifest file, and after the time duration, we will uh, 
delete the manifest file using coop control delete. This work is, uh, sorry, Jian Yu and Ji Hun Bei working on this project, project, thanks to them. Yes, and we will add a tutorial on how to achieve observability using open telemetry while executing chaos experiment. Here's a overall architecture of our tutorial. And if you complete this tutorial, you can see like this graph on a dashboard. This project is done by Suihan Im and Jayan Park, thanks to them. You know, we have lots of pull requests that I didn't mention. We have boss test, pull, boss test cases or unit test cases, uh, API documentation updates, or any other so many pull requests. So thanks to all mentees and community members to achieve these uh, amazing works. Yes, you know, uh, I will continue to contribute to Litmus Chaos. We are open to collaborating with other open sources, so I can't wait for my next things. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Hi, hi, thank you. Yeah, it was great. Um, yeah, it's uh, really great to see the amount of contributions we have on Litmus, and especially um, you joined and you invited a lot of other Korean contributors too. And it's really great the amount of things you can do in different parts of Litmus, it's not just code contribution, but like you said, it's also blogs and talks and everything. So yeah, uh, before I move into some questions that I'm curious about, I just wanted to invite the uh, attendees to use the Q&A tab and ask any questions if you have. But one question I particularly was interested on is um, you mentioned transitioning from a novice to a maintainer now. So that is a difficult uh, you know, path because you have to learn a lot of things and also grow with the community. So what would you say were your uh, main challenges while you were doing the transition? Yes, um, I think the biggest challenge is the picking items for contributions. You know, there are yeah. only few good first issues, and not uh, I cannot find the uh, attractive issues. Maybe so that's what that was my challenging. So um, mm -hmm. at that time, I request to the community uh, members to write creepy. So I request to him that I want to contribute something, but I don't know how to start. So he gave me an action items. So I recommend to someone who are hesitating to contribute because of the lack of uh, items. Uh, I just want to say that, hey, uh, just a request to the community manager or the, or the maintainers that I want to I, I wanna contribute to something and I don't have any idea. So if, can you uh, recommend something? So I think that's the uh, start of the contribution. Got it. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense perfectly. Cool. Uh, I think another question I have, let me check. Okay, we still are yet to get any question from the audience, which I'm waiting desperately. But one question I have is, uh, there are a couple of different sections in Litmus, I would say. One would be the SDK, and then you have web, and then you have a lot of Golang code. So before you jump into something which you might be in a familiar with go or some some other technology so do you like uh, suggest or like given you have any advice on certain resources that they should use before they get started to make things easy for them sure uh you know i love watching the other cncf events or attending kubecon Coop day and other cncf hosted events so because you know there are lots of ideas and lots of attractive ideas. So I usually reference them for achieving ideas. So it's a great way to start to get a new idea, I think. So there are many projects like Java SDK or, you know, a lot of chaos force are coming from that yeah. Uh, conference. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So attend a lot of conferences, basically. Yes. <laughs> All right, I guess uh, that's about it. We are pretty much on time and we have uh, another session right next. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, it's great to uh, be a part of uh, 
Litmus, and uh, thanks NamQ for the amazing contributions. Yes, thank you, my mentor. Thank you. Thank you. All.